Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. I created an empty Android Studio project called Git Practice YouTube here. So I will show you the concepts of Git with this project here. It really doesn't matter what kind of project that is. If you choose Java, if you choose Kotlin, if you choose minimum API level 25, it doesn't matter. It's not about the code this time. Instead, it will be about Git. So the first important concept of Git are repositories. What is a repository? In the end, that is nothing more and nothing less than just your project folder of, or basically a folder of a project that you manage with Git and that you want to backup with Git. But repositories not only allow us to backup our own changes, they also allow us to easily work together with other developers on the same project, basically. Because a repository doesn't need to be local on your PC, instead it could also be available remotely on a server, for example, on GitHub. And then just everybody who wants to work with you on that project and has that link to that repository can simply download it to their PC. And if we take a look in our project hierarchy here, then you can see that is our project folder. But that is not a repository yet because right now we don't use our, our project here with Git. If we want to use it with Git and if we want to make it a repository, then we have two ways of doing that, either from the command line or from the functionality that is already implemented in Android Studio. But behind the scenes, the functionality of Android Studio will also make use of Git from the command line. I will always show you both options in this series. First of all, for the command line, there is already an integrated command line, an integrated shell in Android Studio. If you take a look in this bottom bar here, then there is a tab terminal, which is exactly such a command line. But of course, if you're not in Android Studio and want to manage another project that's not written in Android Studio, then you can just um, open your own shell. For example, in Windows, it's PowerShell, this window, and then you can type all the commands in here. In Linux, it's just the standard terminal, and in Mac OS, I just don't know how it's called, but it also has a command line, of course. And right now, really make sure that if you type git inside of this command line and press enter, that something like this shows up and that it basically recognizes that command git. If it doesn't and you're using Android Studio, then that probably means that Git is not included in your path variable. The path variable is an environment variable that contains all the paths in which the shell will look for executables when you enter a command. To quickly show you how to add that for your, um, how to add Git to your path variable if you don't have that. I can show you that for Windows. In Linux, it's pretty trivial because it's already contained in the shell if you install it there. And for Mac OS, I don't know. I don't have a Mac here. But I can show you that for Windows. To find out where your Git path is, we simply clear that shell here, pressing Control and L. And then we can type where Git. And then it will print out that path where your Git executable is located. You want to copy that path, then you go to your Windows search, type in path, and then you will see that pop up, edit the system environment variables. You want to click on that, then this system properties window will pop up, and here we have a button environment variables. We click on that, and this tab will open up, and here you can see there is a path variable. If we double click on that one, then this window will open up and here are all the paths for the shell in which it will basically look for executables. And you can see here is my path for the GitHub desktop because I have a program for GitHub installed and that already comes with that Git executable. But you probably don't have that if you're watching this series. So what you want to do is you just want to click on new and simply paste the path that you just got from your shell that you got with this rare git command. And then after that, you can type git everywhere on the system in the shell, and it will basically find it. But anyways, I think Android Studio already does that if it is installed, but I'm not sure about that. But now you know how to do that, and we can continue working with git here. So what we want to do here is we want to make our project folder a repository. And if you take a look in our shell here, 
you can see we are currently in the root folder of our project and that is exactly where you need to be. Otherwise you will create your repository somewhere else. So really make sure that this is the path to the project in Android Studio you just created. And then to create a repository out of that folder, we type git init. So initialize, it will basically make a repository out of that. But I won't press enter here because then it will make a repository out of the, uh, but I won't press enter here because then it will make a repository out of that. And I also want to show you the other option in Android Studio we have, and that is to go to this VCS button up here, which stands for version control system. And here you can see enable version control integration, which does exactly the same as git init. So you can choose any of those versions. Let's choose the command line version here, type git init, press enter, and then you can see it initialized an empty Git repository in blah, blah, blah. And hopefully you have noticed some changes in Android Studio after you type that command. For example, our main activity and activity main XML are now in red. And you can also see a little tab popped up here um, that's called version control. If we click on that, then we have all kinds of functionality for our version control in this um, in this repository here. And here is a little drop down called unversioned files. If we open that, then it basically lists all of our files contained in our repository contained in our project. And all of those file names are in red. So what unversioned means here is, well, we created our repository, we told Git that we want to use this folder with Git and want to track the files in it. But for now, we didn't tell it which files we want to track. And if a file is untracked by Git, so untracked basically means when we want to back up our project, this file won't be backed up. And currently, none of our um, files will be backed up if we would do that. So if that is the case, if that file wouldn't be backed up by Git, then the file name is marked in red. And to change that, we need to use the git add command to basically add a file to our list of files that is being tracked. We can do that from the command line again and from Android Studio. First, I will show you the command line option here. Let's go inside of our terminal, clear that out. And I also want to switch to the project view here, not, from, not to the Android view instead to the project view so we are able to see all of our files contained in our project folder. And if we now type git add and for example use that Gradle W file here, we type Gradle W here, we want to add that to our tracked file list in git, press enter and then git has added that file which you can also see in Android Studio that it is marked yellow now and the other files are still marked in red because they are unversioned but this Gradle W file here is versioned now because we added it. And there's also a possibility to completely prevent a file from being tracked, which is called git ignore. That is this file here, you can see that is always called git ignore and has a dot at the start, which means it's basically a hidden file, but we can still see it. And if we open that up, you can see some bunch of files and expressions that won't be tracked by git, even if we add them with the add command, or I think that won't even work. So that is, for example, very useful if you have an API key in your project that we don't want to publish to your public repository so everybody can see it. You should never do that with git. Then you can add that API key to your git ignore file, and then git will basically ignore it. Let's show you that. Go to your root package here, and create a new file, call it API key.txt. And you can see Android Studio also automatically notifies us if we want to add that following file to Git because we just created a new file. It wants to automatically add that. We could set the option remember and don't ask again here and click on add. That means the newly created files will always be automatically added to Git and tracked but for now, I will click on cancel because I want to show you how to do that adding process with Android Studio manually. And inside of our API key, you can see that is also in red now because we clicked on cancel and didn't add it to our Git. 
let's enter something here, top secret API key. And if we now want to add that file to our git ignore file, so to ignore it, that it isn't published to our git repository when we publish our changes basically, we go inside of our git ignore file and simply add the path to that file we want to ignore here, which is just API key.txt. And then this file will be ignored. And you can also see that at the color of that file. I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's a slightly different red than this git ignore file, for example. And this local.properties file is also ignored. As you can see here, local properties, that file is also in git ignore. So this color is a little bit another kind of red, of course. But let's say you want to add a file to our git tracked history with Android Studio, so not with the command line, then we can simply right click on that file and go to git and simply click on add here. And then you can see the color of that file is now in yellow too. So that will be track two. But usually we want to add all the files in our repository to git that are not contained in our git ignore file. And for that, we can simply use git add and a dot after that. That will add all files in our repository and all files in the subdirectories to our git repository. So if we click enter here, then it will add all those files. If we take a look and wait a second, then you can see all the files turn yellow and all the files that are contained in our git ignore file won't be yellow because they won't be tracked. But this doesn't mean yet that those files that we added here are already backed up because with the add command, we only specify those files that should be backed up when we make a backup, but we haven't made that backup yet. And to actually make that, we need to make what is called a commit. A commit is nothing else than just a snapshot of your changes of the files you added with the add command. So you just save the current state of your program with a commit. And to make that commit, let's actually switch to our main activity. And to make that commit, we use the shell here. Well, we can use the shell. We can also make that with Android Studio, of course. But let's choose the shell first and type git commit. And right now, this commit needs a message. So we need to specify a message with minus m. And then in quotation marks, we write the message we want to attach to that commit, basically. And in the message, we just write which changes we made in that commit. So basically, what we added, which features we added in the program, which functions we added, which stuff we removed, which bugs we fixed, and so on. For example, we write login bug fixed. And if we then press enter, it would commit all of that. Well, let's actually do that. You can see it added all of those files, or actually backed up all of those files contained in the list of files that we added with the add command and made a commit out of that. And in general, you should make commits pretty frequently. So of course, not after every line you change, but after every little functionality you add, basically, you just make a commit to save that current state. And then whenever something doesn't work later on, you can always jump back to that commit you made earlier. And in Android Studio, you can also display all your commits. If you go to the version control tab here, and then click on log, then you can see here are all your commits. And that is our just created commit login bug fixed. And here are all the files that are contained in the commit. So that is exactly the state of our project that we saved with that commit. But let's actually make another commit from Android Studio. So without the shell, without the command line, let's make some changes in our file because without changes, Git will recognize that and it won't make the commit because that doesn't make sense to make a commit um, without any changes. Let's make two enters here and just write print line. This is contained in my second commit. And you can also see in Android Studio on the side here that there is a green bar. That green bar basically tells you all the changes you made because we added those two lines here that weren't contained in the commit before, but now they are. So it tells us this is new stuff here. 
And now to make that commit with Android Studio, you can see in the top right corner, we have some Git options and we want to click on that check mark. Then this window will open up and you can see it already checked all the files in which we changed something. So this time it won't add every single file in that commit. Instead, it will only add those files in which we made some changes. And because we only made changes in the main activity, we also only need to save that main activity now. And if we double click on that file main activity here, then this window will open up and you can see this is our old version and this is our new version. So you can perfectly see the, the green bar here, which tells us which lines we changed in that file. So that is super useful. For example, if you fucked something up and you want to just take a look in older commits, which lines you had differently there. So if we close that window again, then you can see we have a text box here to enter our commit message. Just type, um, this is our second commit. And yes, we could just um, press commit here, but we could also attach an author here. So if you're working with several people on your project, then you might want to do that. So others can see who actually made that commit, but I'll leave this blank for now and click on commit. And then you can see Android Studio committed this, one file committed, this is our second commit. And it also appears in our log in that version control tab. So this is our second commit. And here you can also see that main activity file, which we can open again, and it will display us those changes again. So that is super useful. So that's it for the second part of this Git series. In the next parts, we are going deeper into Git but I hope you understood everything here. If so, please leave a comment below. If you didn't understand something, then just comment below, ask your question, and hopefully I can answer that. And yeah, have a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.